What's your name? Dan. And Wanamaker. Where were you living during the 60s and 70s? Uh, Columbus, Ohio. Before Dan Wanamaker became the local celebrity and distant father he is, he had humble beginnings in the city of Columbus, Ohio. Being a young American lad during the Cold War against Russia, times were tense with the constant threat of a nuclear war. What was it like living in fear of a nuclear attack? Well, we, in Columbus, uh, we, uh, we didn't have fears. I mean, uh, we were aware of it and uh, we, we knew what could happen, but uh, as far as uh, the way we were educated, we were educated, hate everything, anything to do with Russia. What were your thoughts of Russia growing up? Well, that's it. They're, they're evil. You know, they're like the Darth Vader. You know, we're brainwashed to think that, you know, we're the best and uh, they're, they're the worst. So uh, it didn't matter what they did or what they didn't do, we were, we were hated. While he was taught to view Russia as the big enemy, he was able to tune out the thoughts of whites being the superior race. Growing up in different times, what were your views on people of a different race? Well, my my opinion, you know, I, I was a lot open-minded because of my mom and dad, but mostly my dad. Uh, he taught at all-black school, and uh, you know, I was raised to treat everybody equally and the same. But then, you know, I think there was a period when the um, the uh, oil war happened, and I ran cut us off. That we were again brainwashed to hate it anybody from Iran. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, discrimination, um, at least in our household, we didn't have much. What about any. people you were friends with? Well, that's a great question. Unfortunately, we lived in a, um, a pretty white neighborhood and all my friends were white. I only had one uh, African-American play football with us, and Walt Sears. He was a good guy. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't, we, we had for you know, all Caucasians. Dan was raised in an accepting household where they always had an open mind. Back when women were viewed more as property, Dan was raised to believe otherwise. So what were your thoughts on feminism at the time? We didn't have thoughts about feminism. I mean, it was not much to think of because there wasn't too many movements. Um, uh, being brought up uh, fairly religious Catholic, you know, we had our divide line what males did and what females did. So what were your thoughts on abortions and birth control? You know, uh, again, when I was younger, I, I didn't have any thoughts. I didn't you know, think about it. It wasn't something you would think of. But as a guy or it's, it's still a, a person's freedom choice. While the world around him was full of equality for everyone, in 1964, a new music revolution started with a band called The Beatles. Um, so were you affected by Beatlemania? And can you explain what Beatlemania was? I was very aware of Beatlemania. I was not affected, but it seemed like every female from eight to hundred was just in love with every single Beatle and uh, uh, took over the country. Do you, Were you? you know, that real well? Their music was never heard of, and uh, they got people revved up. Were you a fan of their music? Back then, I liked it, but as uh, I got older, I became more of a fan. The Beatles, equality, no stress about nuclear war. Dan lived an enjoyable life with lots of free time to spend with his friends. So what did you and your friends do when you hung out as teenagers? Uh, good question. Um, uh, a lot of times we got in a car and drove, went to a pizza place, went to a lot of drive-in movies, theaters. Oh, wow. In high school, uh, uh, we played a lot of sports, so we did a lot of sporting activities. Once we got to college, that was a different story. We went to bars. But, uh, Did you do any of the fun activities, such as seeing how many people can be piled into a telephone booth? No, we didn't do that. No, we. we do you know people who did that? We know Volkswagen, but no yeah. telephone. But with an easygoing life, Dan didn't have too many hardships. Okay, what was a big struggle growing up during the sixties and seventies? Well, I I was at the later end, but uh, I don't know if it struggles, but drugs became a real issue uh, in the uh, 60s. Um, I stayed away from them, but some of my friends got into them and kind of ruined their lives. So 
that was probably the, uh, the, the, the big thing for us was uh, drugs. He even got to witness the very moment when Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon in 1969. What were you doing during the moon landing? Watching it. Okay, can you elaborate how you were watching it? Like, what, what were you at school? Like, yeah, it was a big event. It was like the, the event of the century. Uh, we were at school, and uh, the TV on. It was black and white, mm -hmm. and. Uh, we all applauded when he landed, and uh, it was history. And he, well, uh, Neil Armstrong's uh, parents lived in a small town, Wapakoneta, Ohio. Um, they weren't really that popular because they had chicken coops, and it made the whole town smell. My aunt lived right next to them, and uh, the short was is uh, uh, that's how we got to know uh, of Neil Armstrong and what they did. However, Dan lived in America, and he was taught and knew very little about his next-door neighbor, Canada. What did you know about Canada when you were young? Unfortunately, very little, next to none. Uh, I think we learned the ten territories, and that was pretty much it. Uh, Canada, even though it was our neighbor, it was like it didn't exist. What about Canada's efforts during the war? Oh, none. Uh, as far as the history and everything else, it was like... Raw, raw, the United States, they did it, they want it all, and, uh, you know, uh, the Americans take a lot of credit for a lot of stuff they shouldn't. Okay. During the FLQ crisis, slash, were you aware of it? I wasn't aware of it, no. I had no comment on that one.